Hello folks and welcome back. This is part two. I told you I'd do a follow-up shooting of my custom-made 1917 Enfield uh, Eddie Stone, Pennsylvania edition of 300 H&H. &H. As I told you in the last video, uh, about two and a half million of these were made uh, for the British and for the uh, American Expeditionary Forces uh, during World War I. Uh, this one happened to be rechambered and retooled uh, to a 300 H&H action. Uh, but basically to go over the gun real quickly or the rifle real quickly is a 24 inch barrel, obviously an Enfield action. Uh, it's got a, a custom trigger in it that set it right at two pounds. Has a very fancy fiddleback uh, uh, zebra maple stock. Uh, it's got a hinge floor plate. Uh, you can kind of see the, Enf the old Enfield military style uh, sight that was left on it. Uh, it has a 6x20 Barska scope on it. Uh, yeah, it's, a, it's an inexpensive scope, but it is serviceable and it served me well. Uh, I shot my first elk with this over 35 years ago and my last elk just two years ago with this very rifle and it still works. The ammunition I'm going to be shooting today are are basically two different types of bullets. The first one is a Nosler Acubon, 150 grain bullet. Uh, I don't like shooting these, they're very accurate, but they're expensive to shoot, about 75 cents a piece just for the bullet. But uh, they are constructed uh, not to come apart. They are a bonded bullet, so they're very good for elk. The other bullet I'll shoot is uh, also a 150 grain Hornaday SST. Uh, these shoot okay. Uh, uh, and they are a lot cheaper to shoot, so I pretty much just use them as ciders because my experience with the SSTs is that they do come apart. Uh, they are very explosive. They are very effective, but I sort of like two holes through and through an animal, uh, so I have a blood trail just in case it's an uh, in, improper shot. So if you'll take a look, uh, you might be able to see the target. It's at uh, 100 yards. I have not shot this rifle in, in two years now since I worked up these loads. So what you're going to actually see is cold bore shots. Uh, if I have to adjust the scope, I'll adjust the scope. But uh, thank you for watching. Enjoy the shooting. I'll be right back. Now the uh, nozzlers. Looks like some pretty fresh deer tracks this morning out here in my shooting area. Looks like a pretty good sized mule deer doe and a, and a fawn. Uh, glad they're gone and not around where I can shoot. It is a beautiful day today. You, you can see the, the 
skies of the quarry of the place that I shoot. You can see the mountains. Uh, I'm really blessed to be in Idaho. Just a word for all of you that are sheltered in place. Thank you for doing that and helping to stop the spread of this virus. Uh, God bless you. Keep you safe. Uh, take care of yourselves and your family first. Let God take care of the rest. Take care, folks. All right, it looks like a pretty good target. You have the 150 grain SST on the left, and you have the nozzlers on the right. So we'll take a look. Uh, the SSTs, one, two, three. Again, I did not adjust the scope, and this rifle has not been shot in two years. So that's roughly one inch apart, two touching right there with the SSTs, traveling right at about 32, 25 feet per second. Nozzlers did a little bit better. As you can see, that's probably a half inch group with uh, two touching there. Uh, again, uh, both of them, uh, point of impact is a little bit left. I would like to have this uh, sighted about one inch high at uh, 100 yards. Uh, that would take me uh, back dead on about 275 yards because this is a long range uh, uh, rifle. But I'm uh, pleased with that. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did like it, uh, please uh, hit the thumbs up, subscribe, ask any questions. Uh, I'll see you again the next time that I shoot. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.